Hello, my name's Mark and I am G-Code Tutor. And I'm here with Practical Machinist to look at a G-Code program where we can do female corner radiuses on a square plate. Okay, so I've had this question pop up in my inbox a few times now, and I've also seen it asked on social media. So the problem is here is people are struggling with female corner radiuses. So I'm going to write a very basic G-code program to explain how we do that. Now, this is not a full program. I'm not using cutter compensation. I'm not using a lot of the things that I normally use. This is purely about point-to-point -point programming so we can learn how to do these sorts of radiuses with G-code. Okay, let's make a start. So this is the part that we're going to make. And our first line here is our introduction line to our program. And we're giving it a program number and a comment there in operator's notes. And next up, I'm defining what tool I'm using here again in operator's notes. So where it's in brackets, it's not read by the machine, only the operator. And it finishes there on an end of block, that's semicolon. And that's how we tell the machine it's the end of that line and to move on to the next. Okay, so this is our safety line. I've gone through it many times um, in different videos with Practical Machinist. So if you wanna know more about this, pop back through and have a look at some of those videos. Next up, I'm doing a tool call. Now, usually you'll see in my programs, I would call T0101 and not just T1. Now the reason for that is quite often we're programming on laves. Laves tend to use that format, although I have seen it on a lot of mills as well. But that format calls the data from the tool table straight away. With this style of programming, it calls it on a separate line, and I'll show you in a minute. So here we are calling our work shift datum, G54. So this sets the zero point of our part. And this is one of those um, offsets I was telling you about. So when we use T1 instead of T0101 to call tool one, we need to still set the Z height. And we define that by using an H1 tag and G43 is our cutter length of compensation G code. So now I'm setting the spindle speed, 1500 RPMs, very quick. And we're using MO3 to turn the spindle on in a clockwise direction. And then I'm just wrapped in our tool to the start position of where we want to cut. Now, where I'm not using cutter compensation on this part, we're cutting exactly on the line of the drawing here on the left. So this means that the part will be undersized by half the diameter of our tool or the radius. But I'm, a, I'm not teaching cutter compensation in this and we're trying to keep it nice and simple so we can see exactly what's going on. So for this example, I've removed cutter compensation. So we're cutting directly on the line. So the part will be five millimeters less than it's shown on the drawing here because we are, this is our tool path and not the size of the part that we are cutting. Okay, so now we're gonna do a GO1 move. So this is where we start to control the feed rate and we use an F value for that. So we're using an F value of 100. Now all the speeds and feeds I've plucked out of thin air, I've not decided what material we're cutting here, so I've not set the correct speeds and feeds. These are just uh, figures I've popped in just for the sake of teaching. And we've got MO8 at the end there, so we're turning on our coolant as our cutter comes down to depth. And we're taking a five mil deep cut there. Okay, another GO1 line, and we could have omitted the GO1. We don't need to repeat it on every line. Once it's active, it is active. But I've added it again here for simplicity. So on this line, we are moving up to the start position of our first female radius there. And we've increased the feed rate. Because that first feed rate was a plunge feed rate, we're coming down in Z to do that plunge cut. Now we're cutting along in X and Y, so we don't need to slow that feed rate down. We can go as fast as we the tool will allow us. There is that first female radius. So we're using a GO3 and an R value to define that rad. Now we could use I and J's, but when we're doing 90 degree corner radiuses, the R value is good enough for our needs. We don't need to overcomplicate things here. So GO3 gives us that anti-clockwise radius, and then we define the end point with X and Y there. So we're coming along five millimeters in X, because that's the radius of this um, rad that we're performing here. And then we've got Y 50 millimeters, which is um, the top of our part there. So now we move along to the start position of the next female radius. We just come along in X by 45 mil. And then we're switching back to GO3 again to do 
that last point of that rad. So when we go to GO3, we are specifying the end point of that radius and then giving it an R value and telling the size of that rad. Now, if your end point is not correct, you'll soon see it because this radius will be a lot bigger or it'll try and go backwards or it can do all sorts of weird stuff and it's very easy to spot straight away. So that's why we should always be doing dry runs before anything like this, just to make sure the tool is doing what we expect it to do before we offer up any material. So now we've got another GO1 move and we're coming right down to that bottom radius there, which is just five millimeters up on the Y axis. Then another GO3 move, that's anti-clockwise rad there, and we issue the end point, followed by an R value of the size of the radius. And then we come back along to almost our starting point on GO1. Then GO3 again for the end point of that female radius, our final female radius right there. Then once we've cut that, the tool path is complete. So rapid move G00, we can lift that up five millimeters above the surface of the material. We're assuming the surface of the material is zero here. So this is five millimeters clearance. And then we can use G00 again to wrap it back to a safe position away from our part. MO9 turns off the coolant. MO5 turns off the spindle. And M30 designates the end of the program. So that's a very basic program on how we do female radiuses. Now, the interesting thing is, if we take all those GO3s that we've written and change them to GO2s and change nothing else, we would end up with a male corner radius uh, square. So it works exactly the same as it does when we're doing normal radiuses, when we do female radiuses, we just change that GO2 to a GO3 and it will give us these inverted radiuses like this. Now, if you want to know more about GCO programming, computer-aided design, machine shop, maths, tooling, health and safety, I have a whole bunch of courses over on my website at gcotutor.com where you will learn all of this stuff. And I have loads of free articles and free courses and free books, all sorts over there to help you with your career as a machinist. So pop over and have a look.